It ain't perfect. No, it's, it's good, bro. Thank you. I'm really just trying to get creative with the way that I compose the image. How does it look? What is it, does it tell a story? Even if it doesn't tell a story, is it a unique angle? A unique way of taking that photo that somebody else wouldn't take it the same. Photography is, in my opinion, not about how expensive the gear you have is. It's about what you can do with it. Hopefully you can take some of these things and go take some cool photos on your own. We are once again at the lot. Today we're not gonna be talking about wheelies, but I'm gonna spend a little bit of time doing wheelies. Today I wanted to make a video on how to actually uh, take good pictures. So some of you guys may know, um, photography is kind of where I, where I came from. It's something that I kind of take some pride in and uh, get complimented on a good bit. And I always get questions about like, you know, how do you take really good pictures? Probably leave the GoPro on for a few, do some little wheelies, and then we'll hop off and talk about camera stuff. That one when you were coming this way, yeah. you were you were getting you were like just about there with the like sun and shit in the background. It looked dope. That was probably my best one. That was a good one. Right. Scary shit. <laughs> Trying to learn how to wheelie, dog. I'm acting like an idiot, dude. Yeah. I was I came back this way and I fucking just like ripped it and I was like, oh, I can I can go 70 in a wheelie. That's cool. <laughs> 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 here is trying to help me take some good photos of me doing a wheelie and I just I'm sucking at the wheelie but there we go I'm doing some trash wheelies here my friends Take a look. <laughs> Was that one good? I don't. I. I I'm back to. Oh, dude. Oh, that's fire, dude. I was hoping. <laughs> you got a couple in there. Hell yeah. That's fucking sick too. That's a sick one. It ain't perfect. No, it's <laughs> it's good, bro. Thank you. I never end up getting photos of me. I know. I figured as the photographer, that's how I feel when I like roll my Insta. Yeah. For people. All right, boys and girls. AJ just bounced. I think we are done with wheelies for the day, but. Sun's starting to get a little bit lower. We're getting uh, some warm colors. The lighting looks kind of cool. 
Um, I'm running a ND32 right now on the GoPro. It might be a little bit too dark, but I don't really want to fuck with it right now. Um, taking photos of your bike really helps to have a nice camera for sure. But I mean, even if you just have like a, a little Rebel or an old film camera or something, you can absolutely take some sweet photos. For me, my biggest thing is lighting. That's why I waited a little bit for the sun to come down. This isn't quite like, you know, perfect sunset lighting or anything, but it's not like the sun is, you know, straight above us and you just have really flat lighting. Lighting is, is really everything in photography. And I think it comes into play a lot when you're taking pictures of something like a bike or a car, primarily because you have all of these little intricate pieces and all of these pieces that light is gonna kind of cascade off. So really, the trick is finding the way that the light interacts with your machine and finding cool ways that that can be captured on camera. This is a Canon EOS R. It has a 50 millimeter 1.2, 1.8. Yeah, 1.8. Um, 50 millimeter 1.8, cheap, small lens but very very powerful i use this lens almost exclusively i have a 24 to 70 that is good for just general stuff but with this you're going to get a really nice bokeh i'm not going to go into all photography stuff but the reason behind that is because of the f-stop the lower the number the more background blur you're going to get um the lower the number as well the more light you're going to be able to let in so when it gets darker, when you're doing lots of uh, nighttime footage, having that lower f-stop really makes a big difference. And now if you're taking photos on like an iPhone, dude, the iPhone cameras are pretty great at this point. In my opinion, they will never match a quality camera with proper uh, settings on it just never because there's so much post-processing after you take the photo on an iPhone that you just don't get on this when you're just taking raw right so I, I'm really not gonna go into all the settings that I have I keep my camera pretty much in aperture priority almost exclusively everyone's gonna say oh you shoot a manual shoot a manual shooting a manual is great but you end up having to take more time for each shot to only just get a little bit better quality, in my opinion. Um, if you really know what you're doing and you know your camera really well, it's not that bad, but for just ease of use, you know, I, I just handed this camera off to AJ and I was like, cool, dude, I set up everything. You don't have to mess around with anything. All you do is you hold the shutter down and then click it when you're ready to shoot. That's it. And he was able to get some pretty sweet photos. I'll put them up on the screen now. But I think for right now, I'm going to start with the bike here because the sun is coming right at it, but we have all these cool shadows going on. That's kind of what I'm looking at here. And sometimes I like to go onto Instagram or something before I do a shoot just to get some inspiration. But what I really like to do is get kind of low. Let's see. Get low. Um, I do have an ND filter on this. It is a variable ND filter. So great thing about a variable one is that you don't have to swap it out like on the GoPro where it's just, you know, hard stop 32, 30, uh, 32, 16, 8, 64. Now I'm not messing around with it too much, but the whole point of the ND filter is I don't have to drop my aperture a whole lot more. I can just darken the image with the ND filter, not sacrifice any quality. So what I'm gonna do here is I kind of like these three quarter shots of bikes. I'm gonna kind of lay down, like I said, get low. And then just take the photo. Let's see, that looks good to me. <sighs> One of my biggest like favorite things to do when I'm taking a photo of a bike or a car is really get into the small details and the way that the light interacts with those details. Stuff like steering wheels, stuff like handlebars, gauge clusters, all that stuff. It's kind of nice because what you can do is you can get a really cool 
foreground background effect where right now I'm taking a picture of the gauge cluster right I'm taking a photo of the gauge cluster but I have kind of the forks in the foreground and you get this cool kind of blur on that um, rather than you know if I were to just take a photo of the gauge cluster it's not as interesting it's not as appealing to the eye um, the cool thing about those kind of I don't want to say macro shots but kind of in that realm is that you can have a very clear composition of foreground mid-ground and background whereas if you just take the shot like how we took it just on the floor on the floor on the ground there's not as big of a composition there it's pretty much just foreground and background with those intricate shots you can get a little bit more now I think what I'm gonna do ooh actually the exhaust can looks kind of cool the way it shimmers off or the way the uh, the lights shimmering off it so maybe I'll take a picture of that if I can get it to focus come on come on I think that looks pretty cool now with this I'm really trying to keep my shadow from casting onto the bike and that's kind of hard right because if I want to take a picture right here my shadow is going to be right on it so maybe you kind of have to take a few steps to the side or crouch down a little bit um, but what you can do is also play with your shadow a little bit and let it cover up certain things to bring out the detail in others I think that's kind of most of the shots I want to get from this angle though and I'm running low on battery so I might get one or two more you can always get kind of a get creative with the composition of it you know maybe you want to take more of a more of a top-down view right top-down or just normal uh, standing height photos are not my favorite I think it makes the bike look smaller right so when you get really low it makes the bike look big and more powerful just subconsciously um, when you're taking it from like this angle that you're seeing it on the GoPro it looks a lot smaller and it doesn't look as powerful but I think we'll leave it at that angle at something like the lot where the color is very uh, absent I guess you could say um, you know we have a lot of color there but not a lot of color here you kind of have to get creative with the way that you take your shots because you don't have a whole lot of color to take um, to just rely on the color of the image if that makes any sense but maybe I'll use that ramp because I think that ramp looks kind of neat I know my GoPro is going to die soon, so I'm trying to make this decently quick. I think that's a very sweet photo. Reason being, you have light coming over the top, but you have a lot of shadow right here. So it'll accentuate kind of the face on the bike, makes it look a little bit beefier. By the way, I just kind of wanted to put this out there. Um, channel's been growing a good bit lately and I appreciate that let me know kind of what videos you guys want to see or what you want me to talk about I'll always take new uh, new video ideas but thank you guys for kind of supporting me and helping me have fun with this I'm, I'm having a lot of fun making more videos so here same game I'm gonna play the low angle and then because we have this here maybe I kind of want to get that in the foreground a little bit it will get a little bit closer see but now my shadows casting over the bike so that might be tough mm. might not be able to get that shot from that angle I think that looks sweet looks almost kind of tucked away see and then maybe again we'll just kind of rotate around the bike 
this piece I can use for a cool foreground effect. Or it almost looks like you're kind of peeking over it at the subject. Anytime there's mirrors as well, I always think that's a, a cool thing to manipulate if you can. And maybe I'll tuck it over in that corner. What should I do for good photos? Now, maybe I'll do another video if this one does well on uh, taking good photos of other people, you know, while they're doing a wheelie or riding or, you know, rollers or something like that. Is that has its own kind of unique challenges. Okay. Okay. All right. I think that'll be kind of cool. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. So again, I'm getting low, I'm trying to fill up the frame. Maybe I'll take some from this angle I think is pretty sweet. And maybe get a little bit closer. I always like these kind of side shots where you can see the curves in the bike. I always think those look pretty sweet. Maybe I'll just take a horizontal one for good measure. Try to get my shadow out of the frame. Perfect. And then, I don't know, the only other place I think would be really cool here would be under the stairwell there. So, let me just move the bike down there. What I could do is I can bring the bike down on the other side of this banister and get a really cool top-down shot. Maybe I'll do that first and I'll put it this way just so that we have some more variety going on. Um, and because we have these mirrors here, the light's gonna create kind of a cool effect with it bouncing off the mirrors. Oh, that's cool. So, I'm gonna wrap around my strap here. Now, ideally, the bike would be leaning up against the wall, but I really don't wanna dick around with that and fuck up my fairings. And then I think we'll try going next to that stairwell. Maybe see if anything looks good there. Like I said, this is a white bike in a place with not a lot of color. So in a situation like that, I'm really just trying to get creative with the way that I compose the image. How does it look? What is it? Does it tell a story? Even if it doesn't tell a story, is it a unique angle, a unique way of taking that photo that somebody else wouldn't take it the same? That's, I think, the key to like taking good photos, no matter what you're taking photos of because I don't have a whole lot to work with. You know, I could go take photos, you know, up there with the cool, uh, with the light coming through the grass, but I don't know, I don't really want to. I've had plenty of photos like that. So I wanna get some more unique shots of this thing. And like I said, I mean, you can really apply all of this stuff to any bike, it doesn't, or um, any bike, any kind of camera that you're using. It doesn't have to be, you know, an EOS RP. It could be an iPhone, it could be an Android, you know, it doesn't matter. Use what you have. Photography is, in my opinion, not about how expensive the gear you have is. It's about, you know, what you can do with it. I thought this would be a cool angle, but in hindsight, it's kind of just a lot of the same. So, might maybe try to take one more. We'll take it super low. One thing that's also really cool that I can't do right now because I don't have a bottle of water, but if you put water on the ground and you take the camera and put it damn near on the ground, you get this cool reflection um, on the image. Maybe if I scoot it through here, 
Maybe that would look cool. Maybe not. I don't know. What do you think? I think that looks pretty interesting. Why not? In terms of settings and all that, I try to keep my ISO as low as possible. Um, again, I like having a really low f-stop lens. White balance I don't really mess with. I mean, honestly, it's like, like we could talk about these things, but I just don't really think they're all that important in terms of actually like composing your shots. Maybe I'll get creative and kind of come up here. That way there's almost like the stairwell. It's kind of leading to the bike. Maybe I could like shoot it through the, uh, through the railing here. That's a good shot. You might notice in a lot of the pictures that I take, I really like warm footage warm footage, warm images. Might just be kind of because where we are. I like taking photos when the light is like this. Obviously, it kind of looks the best. Um, if you can take good photos in super flat lighting, shit man, you can do anything. But waiting until the lighting gets cooler, cooler, more interesting looking and typically warmer, it's pretty sweet. I didn't really have a good structure for this video, but we'll talk about editing later. I know somebody mentioned they wanted to see how I color grade my GoPro footage, the footage you're looking at right now. So maybe I'll make two separate videos, one for color grading moto vlog footage, and then one for color grading, you know, images, images, photos, or, you know, video you took on your camera, stuff like that. Cause it's a little bit different. But honestly, I don't really think there's a whole lot else that needs to be said. Again, I really don't want to go into settings or color grading too much. I just want to talk about like my process of actually taking or creating the photo and some of the things that I use to make it look more interesting. Obviously, there's a ton more I could say about this and there's a ton of other techniques that I don't even know about. People ask me about how I take these photos all the time, so I figured I'd make a video about it and hopefully it helped you. Hopefully you can take some of these things and go take some cool photos on your own. If you learned a little bit from this video or if it helped you in any way, um, do the YouTube stuff. Click the big red button that says subscribe. Click the, uh, the like button, leave me a comment if you have any other ideas. But yeah, guys, I hope you have a fantastic day. Go shoot some photos, and thanks for watching. Peace.